Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael and welcome back to another Game Maker Studio 2.3 Structs video. I had an introduction for that video planned, I swear. I completely forgot it the instant I hit the record button. So I'm going to be talking more about Structs now. In the last video, I went over the uh, what I call the bare bones form of one of these things, which is just a collection of data, a collection of variables, which have essentially um, superseded DS maps as a way of storing game data. And today I'm going to take that a step further. So, firstly, I'm going to be doing a little bit of reorganizing. Um, I'm going to rename. I'm going to. This is this is the exact same state of the project I had as at the um, at the end of the last video. I'm going to rename the object that this was happening in to inventory, since that's what it's using. I'm going to go into the main room. I'm going to get rid of that instance. I'm going to I'm going to clone it. Control D is the um, the duplicate button, the duplicate shortcut for a resource. I'm going to call this items. I'm going to drag that into the room, and I'm going to work out of that in, out of that object now. And okay, cool. Apparently, that didn't actually duplicate because all of the um, all of the code is no longer there. Whatever. I can work with that. So I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to, uh, I don't think I've talked about this in the past. If you want to have more than one files open side by side in one of these full screen windows, uh, you can just right click, go to uh, single pane, which is one, two columns or three columns. And you can, uh, you can have code open side by side. It's quite helpful. It's something that I should use more often. Anyway, this is where Gmail is going to start to look a little bit more object oriented. So I'm going to say function item if I wanted it to be descriptive, I would call it something like item definition, but I don't want to have to type that out constantly, so I'm going to set a bad example and just call it item. Um, I'm going to uh, add my add my curly braces, but before the beginning of the curly brace, I'm going to add another keyword, which is constructor. And that will mark this function as a constructor, which can be used to create a new instance of a, of a, uh, of a struct, as the name implies. Uh, let's say it takes a few parameters. We'll say hey. name. I'm going to prefix it. I'm going to prefix all the parameters with underscores, just to uh, just to get around any issues that might arise by uh, having other variables with the same name. I'm going to give it a let's say a price and a description. Those are pretty uh, integral piece of pieces of information for uh, for items in video games, wouldn't you say? Inside the function body, I'm going to take each of these variables that are passed as parameters and assign them to um, and assign them to other variables. I've talked about functions before, but just in case uh, you haven't seen that, or just in case you've forgotten, or just in case I did a bad job of explaining them, explaining them the first time, uh, you can see by the syntax highlighting that the function parameters are local variables. These will cease to exist at the end of the uh, at the end of this block of code, the function. And if we want to keep those, we can uh, we can assign them to instance variables. And that brings up another point about variable scoping inside structs. Uh, I will get to that in a minute. I hope I get to that in a minute. That feels like the sort of thing I should get to later. So I think it's time to see what this does. And let's see. Let's uh, let's start off real simple. Like I mentioned in the first video, you can create a, uh, you can create, you can construct a struct. That sounds really funny to say out loud, using the new keyword followed by the name of the, uh, of the function of the struct, and you can pass it parameters just like you would any other function. If you've ever used any other object-oriented programming language before, this is going to look very familiar. What should the price be? Let's make the price an arbitrary ten, and the description is. A sword that you can use to poke things. Um, I know how swords work, I swear. Let's do that again. W what would another item be? Pizza. Uh, let's make pizza significantly more expensive than a sword.
a, uh, a nutritional expert might say otherwise, but that'll be... Someone else can fight about that in the comments. At some point, and I don't know what I was thinking, at some point in the, um, in the Chained Accessor video, I said something to the effect of, does anybody not like bacon? And, um, yeah, someone was quick to point out that people who don't eat meat would probably not be fans of bacon. That, um, yeah, as you can, as you can tell, I don't always think before I open my mouth when I'm making these things. Anyway, let's, let's make use of these two, uh, of these two structs. I will be drawing some text. Let's just, uh, let's just draw all the variables. Let's just put all the variables in a string and draw that on the screen. Uh, item, sword, dot name. Actually, let me call this to keep it consistent with itself. Okay, is that good? Am I missing any, uh, am I missing any parentheses? It does not look like I am. And now let's do the same thing on the next line for the other item. All right, so I'll run the game. And we have, uh, we have a sword item, which contains some variables of a name, a price, and a description. Okay. So the constructor, as you can tell, is... And I'm trying really hard not to make this a pun, but I can't think of any other way to word it. A more structured way of, um, of creating a struct. This is akin to doing something like... This here, this constructor here, is identical in terms of what you get as it is to type something like this. But when you manually, uh, when you manually put data into a struct like this, by using like object notation. Okay, hold up. For some reason, I did a really bad job at explaining the benefits of using a constructor to create a struct over just creating one through code with curly braces and key value pairs like a, a, a JavaScript object. When you just create what I called in the last video a blob of data, with the curly braces and the key value pairs, that's all you get. You don't have the ability to set any values automatically. You can't use inheritance of any sort. You can't parameterize anything. Constructors are there to do all that. They're there to make your life easier. They're there to cut down on the amount of duplicated code you have. That's all they really are. If you ever want to do a simple thing, like create a vector three type that just has an X, Y, Z value, and that's about it, you're more than free to not use a constructor. In that particular case, uh, spending the time to write a constructor might be more effort than it's worth. But otherwise, I would definitely say that it's advisable to uh, go ahead and write a constructor if you're ever using a lightweight object. Struct! God. On with the video. It also allows you to do certain things automatically. For example, if you wanted... Um, I don't know exactly what an item would need from, a, uh, from another data structure, but if you wanted to... Ah, that's not a data structure. If you wanted to make a struct that contains some some certain built-in data structures, uh, you wouldn't have to specify them when you construct them like this, but they will still be there when you try to access them. Hey. So constructors have a few advantages. Uh, there are other things that I will be uh, that I will be talking about with them later. The basic struct, the one that you just define like this, uh, these are useful. There are some situations where you don't need to uh, to go to the extra work of creating a, a constructor. If you just need like a name and a value or something like that, uh, that's valid. A common use for structs, the ones that Yo-Yo Games themselves actually showed off when they were introducing these things were uh, vector types, which are just collections of data that contain uh, a, a coordinate, essentially, a set of coordinates, 2D, 3D, 4D, whatever. Things like that, it would be fine if you just define them in this way without using um, without using a constructor. But the more you start working with data, the more you are going to want to uh, define constructors like this. In particular, there's the matter of methods, which are, as I mentioned in, in the last video, I think. Methods are essentially functions that belong to instances of structs. That's where things get really interesting, but again, since I want to make a, since I want to not like overload too much information into one of these videos, I will talk about that in the future. Okay. 
So I said I'd mention scoping. I said I'd come back to scoping. Ordinarily, up to this point, or I should say up to the 23rd of April in the year uh, 2020, if you were to just type a variable name without that wasn't scoped with like global var or global or whatever, or uh, var to indicate a local variable, uh, the variable would automatically go to the instance that is running the code, even if you're inside another function somewhere. Uh, this has changed slightly with the introduction of structs. As I've alluded to, structs are essentially just instances that um, that do not have an automatic step event, do not have an automatic draw event, do not have an automatic like keyboard event, that sort of thing. They have their own scope. Uh, you can say you can say with a struct, and I need an equal sign there. You can use with. You can uh, throw the scope of the executing code to a uh, to a struct using the with statement. As you can see over here, uh, the change in the name has been reflected. This also applies to constructors. Uh, when uh, when you're inside the constructor, the scope of the code is considered to belong to the struct instead of to the object that's calling the code, which in this case would be just this thing here. Uh, this becomes especially important when you start using methods. Uh, if I can bring this back. Inside the body of this function, uh, the same would happen. The same would be true. But I'm going to leave that for another day. It may be worth taking a, taking a deeper dive into scope instructs. And the guy outside with the lawnmower from the last video has stopped, but now the rain has started pounding down on the roof very loudly. So I guess be careful what you wish for. I'm going to end it off here. In the next video, I'm probably going to talk about methods. My plan for the next video is to talk about methods, but if I think of something else that's more important, I might do that instead. We'll see. I could talk about these things all day. As I've mentioned several times now, structs are the thing that I've been looking forward to the most in the, uh, the 2.3 GML update. Anyway, the code for all this is in the video description as usual. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post one or two of these, uh, one or two of these game maker videos a week, between both uh, the, the the GML update and programming in general, and especially 3D stuff. Uh, what else? Patreon. I've made a Patreon for these things, these videos. If you want to chip in and join the fun, there's a link to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.